Good morning guys and welcome back to High Clopedia. Now it's still the tail end of summer which means we're touching 30, 32 degrees every day. It's too damn hot to hike in the low level mountains. So to escape the heat today I've come up into rural Wufong Township in Shinju County um, to hike um, kind of probably a lesser known mountain it's called uh, I don't even know how to say the name properly Mindoyo Shan I think I'm guessing it's a transliteration from the indigenous word for the mountain um, and it's it's about an hour and a half from Shinju city by a car and it's not too far from a couple of mountains that I've climbed before including uh, Wujishan and uh, Ergongji Shan which you can see from here just about to get started I think it's about a four hour return and then I'm gonna go back down into the valley down below for an interesting history lesson so let's go and if you're only here for the history lesson and not the hike then you can skip to the time shown here and miss all the boring hiking stuff I did not realize that toads could live at around 1500 meters altitude. Interesting. But what do I know? Oh my god. A honeybee has flown up my shorts and I can't get him out now. Mission accomplished. <laughs> First time ever seen a black mushroom. Cool. There's even toads at the summit. Wow. It's just gone 10 o'clock and I've arrived too late for the views. Let's head back down.
one thing I've noticed today is um, there's a lot of fresh green foliage on the trail. I'm guessing it's to do with because the typhoon came by a few days ago. Must have been pretty windy around here and um, blowing a lot of debris from the trees. So the trail is quite hard to follow in some spots but luckily if you ever get lost on a Taiwanese trail you know what to do. Follow the yellow tag trail. Follow the yellow tag trail. The hiking clubs leave the yellow tags hanging from the trees along most routes so uh, if you're a bit wary about where to go you can usually find a trail tag uh, to set you back on the right track but it's not a fail safe solution it's always better to have an offline map I've been using GPX files with Google Maps recently which seems to work pretty well but there's a lot of other methods and uh, apps and software out there that you can uh, check out but I would recommend it the Beast Runner. Listen to the Beast Runner. He knows what he's talking about. All right, so we are done with the hike. Um, total distance was around 7.3 or 7.4 kilometers, and it's taken me around three and a half hours out and back. Um, overall, I'd say this is a pretty easy hike, um, suitable for beginners, although I wouldn't recommend doing it on your own unless you can read uh, a bit of Chinese because some all the signs are in Chinese and if you get a bit confused then you might find yourself in trouble. But uh, yeah, a really good hike but you definitely need your own transportation for this because it's an hour and a half way up in the hills from Shinju and there's no public transport around here. Uh, and now I'm going to head back down into the little village down the valley and learn about some history. Now you have to forgive me about the sound on this clip because there was a typhoon recently and the river just there is raging so there's nothing I can do about the background noise. Sorry. Now technically this is a Chinese history story more than a Taiwanese story but as a keen reader of both Asian and Chinese nationalist history I think it's still an extremely interesting story. Now believe it or not, this house behind me was once a prison of sorts. Now it housed someone for what was one of the longest, if not the longest, periods of political detention in history. Although the prisoner in question only spent 13 years of his more than 50 years of house arrest in this location. Now the prisoner in question was this guy, Zhang Xueliang aka the Yong Marshal and the son of Chinese warlord Jiang Zhuolin. So how did the offspring of a Chinese warlord end up imprisoned in rural Xinju County? Well it's a long story but I'll do my best to tell it quickly. Born in northeast China at the turn of the 20th century, Jiang was thrust into the limelight in 1928 following the assassination of his father by the Japanese who were at the time aggressively pursuing their colonial ambitions in northern China. Seeking to expand their influence in China's northeast, the Japanese had hoped to install the younger Zhang as a puppet leader in the region. You see, the younger Zhang was an opium addict, and the Japanese hoped that by using his addiction they could control him. But instead, his father's death had the opposite effect. Instead of leaning towards the Japanese, Zhang, now the newly anointed leader of the Manchuria region, joined forces with Chiang Kai-shek and his nationalists. Just eight years later, with control of his beloved homeland lost and Japan's presence in northern China growing ever larger, Zhang took action. Angered by Chiang Kai-shek's continued insistence of first defeating the Chinese communists before tackling the Japanese, 
Chiang and another nationalist general conspired with the communists to have Chiang kidnapped on the 12th of December 1936 during a visit to the western city of Xi'an. Chiang was held for 13 days before being released, but only after he had agreed to end hostilities with the CCP and instead join forces with them to fight the Japanese. And while the kidnapping of Chiang Kai-shek had the desired effect in the short term, it also spelled the end of Jiang Xueliang's freedom, as he was detained by Chiang's forces the day after releasing him. Jiang Xueliang spent the next 50 years or so under house arrest, first in China and then here in Taiwan, following the nationalist defeat at the hands of the communists. Jiang eventually left Taiwan for Hawaii in 1995, and he passed away there in 2001 at the grand old age of 100. An interesting story, I'm sure you'll agree, but if you'd like to find out more, and there is a lot more to this story than I've told here, then I will put links to some sources in the description below. But even if you're not into Chinese history or hiking, there's still quite a few things to do if you come to this area. There's a really cool little hot spring area. An ideal place to soak your feet after a hike, although it's pretty damn hot. Pink feet. There's also a cool little place selling local snacks and food. So let's go check it out. Uh, <laughs> So I got a surf and turf combo, but it's a surf and turf combo with a Taiwan uh, indigenous twist. Let's have a look at it. We've got um, chicken roll here, and we've got barbecued squid, and then we've got Taiwanese sausage. And then we've got five different kinds of dips. We've got ma gao, which is the indigenous pepper, and we've got uh, salt and pepper. I think one of them's lemon and chili. Anyway, let's tuck in and give it a try. The chicken roll looks nice. I'll try some of that food. Mm. I dipped it in the mango and it's got kind of like a citrusy taste. It's really nice. That one was chilly. Oh, ha, 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 ha. down with some raw garlic. Oh. I'd say um sausage. and chicken roll with anyone is the best combination. Oh, that was nice. Nice and fresh and I'm so full now. Um, and that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget, give me a like, subscribe to the channel and always hit the bell for notifications. Support the channel, you can hit the thanks bar below the screen or you can visit my buy me a coffee web page and buy a few things three or more coffees and you can get a free Hyclopedia patch all right guys that's it for today long drive back to shinju now take it easy and i'll see you next week over and out